Hello and welcome to the hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's north side, I am Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 1980, Blizzard of Oz by Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne is an English heavy metal vocalist best known for being the original lead vocalist for Black Sabbath, hiring some of the greatest guitarists in heavy metal during his 40-year solo career, and for his occasional penchant for biting the heads off of blind animals. <laughs> Blizzard of Oz is Ozzy's debut solo album. It was released on September 20th, 1980 in the UK and March 27th, 1981 in the US. Like uh, Men at Work a couple week, last week, a couple weeks ago, oh, last yeah. time. You know, separate releases there. It's not something we run into very often. No. On Jet Records, produced by Ozzy Osbourne, Randy Rhodes, Bob Daisley, and Lee Kerslake, and features Ozzy Osbourne on lead vocals and vocal harmonies, Randy Rhodes on electric and classical guitars, Bob Daisley on bass, background vocals, and gongs. Lee Kerslake on drums, percussion, tubular bells, and timpani. <laughs> and and, ba- and Don Airy on keyboards. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our episodes for copyright reasons, but down in the description if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our blog at johnandscotto.com, you'll find links to Blizzard of Oz on Spotify and YouTube, so you can listen along if you'd like. On to track one, I Don't Know. This has been one of my favorite Ozzy songs for a very long time. I listened to this album in my early to mid-teens almost ad nauseum. I know it very well. Ozzy has always been more of a singles guy for me, so this is my first time going for like the full you know, album, mm-hmm. You know, seeing the, the, the different tracks. A, a friend of mine was kind of obsessed with the album at the time, so I heard it a lot. Um, I Don't Know is, again, one of my favorites. Love the sound effects coming in. It's this... It just kind of sets the album up nicely with this kind of, you know, rumble. Um, love how present the bass is. Bob Daisley gets his credit among metalheads. People who know this music know who he is, particularly because he's also a writer and I think producer. Um, yeah. But he's an amazing bass player. Um, that That is one thing you take walking away from this album is like, whoa, it wasn't just Randy Rhodes. No, no. <laughs> Um, in fact, I don't have this in my notes, but apparently the original plan was to call the band Blizzard of Oz. It wasn't going to be Ozzy as a solo artist. It was going to be another band called Blizzard of Oz. Wow. That um, might have that been pretty cool if he'd just not done a solo thing and just did a band. And, and things changed at the last minute. It became a solo thing. Um, Randy was not too happy about it, but he stayed when the others left. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why his backing band was a little different on those early tours. Um, obviously when Randy died, you know, it came, became a lot different. Um, but yeah, love the tension in the opening riff. It's or on the riff in the verse. It's not quite chromatic, but it's close. Love the lyrics. It's basically Ozzy saying like, don't look at me for answers. Don't, you know, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what's going to happen to the world. You know, just, I'm just a guy. <laughs> why doesn't this one get more radio play? Yeah. Um, like love the groove never... in the chorus. <laughs> um, that, that's the real mystery to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and get back to Bob Daisley. He's just the way he plays with timing. Usually, just slightly ahead of the beat. Love the love that and the tension with him and Kurz like it's genius. And then we get to this bridge that is straight up Beatles. <laughs> just a complete left turn. Um. And I actually was listening to a lot of Ozzy's more recent solo stuff, which I kind of passed on. Um, yeah. I kind of stopped paying attention to him after Perry Mason, the last song I kind of liked. Um, what year would that have been? Uh, 90s. Oh, okay. Um, I think it was the second Zach Wilde album. Um, he's very consistent, actually. Even his latest album, it's solidly Ozzy music. Yeah. Like, Ozzy music is always Ozzy music. Um even when he does a duet with um, Elton John <laughs> and Post Malone. The, the song of Post Malone is pretty good. Um, but there's one of his albums. Um, I think it's the one with Dreamer on it. I can't remember the title. Very Beatles influenced. Yeah. Um, I hadn't really noticed the Beatles influence in his work until then. Um, and I kind of felt embarrassed for him with like the, the Dreamer song. It's well, Dreamer's not, so not one of his best. Um, right. But he has always done ballads. Even you, you, you can tell oh, from, yeah. from this one. He's always had a ballad yeah, or two on his albums. 
Um, Even back in the days of Sabbath, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he was always doing something like that. But yeah, Dreamer is a little embarrassing. Um, he, there were some weird choices for ballads that close my eyes forever. Um, right, it's just saying lead a forward. Yeah. Um, but you know that's kind of the fun thing with Ozzy, is he does make weird choices a lot, and there are a lot of train wrecks. <laughs> but you kind of just expect it, and it's kind of just what he does. Yeah. Um, loved how chaotic. Back to I don't know. Love how chaotic the solo gets. The gong in the middle of it was a nice touch. <laughs> There's some really nice use of gong on this. Um, and just love how it just stops cold. Um, it's a song you would expect to fade, but it starts stops cold. Love that. Well, right, because that crazy train riff that he puts on this too. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the 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 two are very similar. Well, there's um, there's lead work that he kind of repeats. I I this is a very controversial statement, but yeah. Randy was an amazing guitar player, but solos were not really his much his strong suit. <laughs> I'm gonna say, and he did recycle a lot of licks. There were a lot of stock licks he used. Um, I thought it was unusual to put these two back to back, though. You yeah. know. On to track they, two. They, they are very similar. Crazy Train. Um, are you going to be a coward this week? And quite the opposite, actually. Okay. <laughs> I um, I'm just so sick of this song. It's a strong song. Oh, oh, I'm not going to give it weakest. You're giving it weakest. Just... Interesting. No, no, I'm not. Oh, it's... you're not. Okay. I I couldn't listen to it honestly because it's just you know it too well. I know the feeling. It's I mean, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's you. Any sporting event, any like, uh, I mean, it's just it's crazy yeah. that how how much the song gets played. It's a great song, but it like going back the last time with Men at Work, um, you know, um, um, Down Under, great song, played into the ground and ruined. Crazy no, train. Nowhere near compared to this though. Nowhere near compared to how much the song is played to the, the oh, to yeah. this day even. Yeah, played into the ground and ruined. <laughs> If you watch any sporting event, you will hear this song. Yeah. Um, Today. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it is an absolute classic. I love the all aboard scream at the be- very beginning. Right. Uh, the riff is iconic. Um, best use of a vibra slap. Um, vibra slap is that <laughs> instrument. It's a percussion instrument. It's got like a, a rattle on one end, a little ball on one end, the other. You hit the ball, it makes a rattle sound. Um, Cake it's is fond of using them. <laughs> yeah um but this is the best use of a vibra slap also loved the bass tone just so thick fills up yeah daisley fills up so much space i like that they didn't overdub a ton of rhythm guitars like they overdub guitars during the solos and appear in there but there's not a ton of guitar overdub so it's just one a lot of times it's just one guitar and the bass so daisley has to fill a lot of space um love the um those Double, those just da-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum kicks. This is so <laughs> iconic. Love the lyrics. Um, I think a lot of Ozzy's lyrics are better than people think they are. I'm I, assuming I Ozzy wrote the lyrics. There's one where I know he didn't coming up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of the lyrics in his work, particularly early on, really brilliant. Um, I, I know Bob Daisley wrote the lyrics to another song. He may have written this too. Um, and I don't know. I don't I, know. Um, I think... The only thing, hmm, I thought it was only No Bone Movies was the only thing Ozzy didn't write. Um, well, there's some, some trivia on Suicide Solution we'll get to that I think implies, oh, okay. strongly suggests that Bob Daisley wrote the lyrics. Um, okay. But, yeah, um, one last thing with Crazy Train. Um, there's this insane ascending thing that he does after the first, you know, going off the rails on a crazy train in the second chorus. As a guitar player, I, I I would love to see this transcribed because I don't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> like, he he wasn't a great soloist, but every once in a while, his, his rhythm playing is amazing. His riffs are brilliant. And every once in a while, he pulls something out that just, it defies physics. <laughs> um, on to track three, Goodbye to Romance. This is the ballad. Uh, Osborne has stated that the song was his way of saying goodbye to his former band Black Sabbath uh, as he thought his career was over after leaving the band. You never know. 
you, you yeah. never know. Sometimes it just doesn't translate to a career. Right. I mean, he was trying something here. Yeah, he, um, he walked away from a very successful band. It was perfectly reasonable to assume, yeah, it's done. Uh, I mean, first I thought it was kind of Yellow Submarine, but it's very Beatle. really, <laughs> very Beatle. It's, it's much more all the young dudes. I thought. Yeah, there is a lot of all. Now that you mention it, there is a lot of all the young dudes in there. Um, love the bass tone. Almost sounds like a fretless. Um, they play yeah. a lot with the timing and the bridge. I, I, I enjoyed that. Then we get this great aggressive guitar so, tone on the solo at you know, t- which is a really nice contrast, you know, to this really pretty acoustic ballad. Um, yeah, nice keyboard solo at the end. Um, I was looking for a, a cigarette lighter, but sadly, I do not have yeah. one. It's just a nice, pretty song, and you know, when you're a teenager and you hear the legends of Ozzy Osbourne and you hear this pretty ballad, it just kind of fucks with your head. <laughs> I think it's quite good, actually. I mean, it's it's a power ballad, and yeah. I think it's a well done one yeah. in, in the end. Um, it, you know, romance. At first, you think he's talking about a, a you know a love, it, but no, in when the you hear sense. the lyrics, it's yeah, it's much more of the classical yeah sense of the word. It's the goodbye to the good old days. Yeah, you know, um, the the, the good day, the good old days are over. I'm moving on, and this is probably going to be the end for me. So we'll I'll see you in yeah. the end. It's about leaving friends behind too, which you know. Mm-hmm. It that's it, a that's a pretty universal theme yeah. that doesn't get explored all that much if you think about it in in song. I, I graduated high school in ninety. There were a lot of metalheads at my high school, so this song got played a lot that year. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Uh, on to track four D. This is a classical guitar piece solo of Randy Rhodes, uh, named after his mother Dolores Rhodes. Just a really nice palate cleanser for you know, and a chance for Randy to show off how how incredible he was. He was a classical guitar virtuoso who became known as a metal player. Um, it, it is very yes or Steve yeah. Hackett actually. Very um, Hackett, um, very yes. Reminds me also of a lot of the interludes on Aqualung. Like, uh, I mean, there's a, a a Hackett piece called Horizons that he yeah. plays on Fox okay. Trot. Um, that that's very similar mm-hmm. to this um i think the beginning of i cannot remember the yes song that that begins has this exact same tone too though okay. yeah it's very influenced by you know prog you know of that era i think it was it was surprising about this to find just how proggy he got in 1980 you yeah. know yeah I expect that out of Black Sabbath, because I, I always thought, you know, Black Sabbath was not that far off from Prague themselves. Sabbath was a jazz band who used distortion. All well, right, which you could say is a Prague band, yeah. you know? But yeah, Yazzie is very proggy on this, on this one anyway. You know, he, yeah. I think by the time he got to Ultimate Sin, even though I love the Jake stuff, I, I will say, you know, all due respect to Randy and Zach Wild, um, Jake Ely was is my favorite Aussie player as a guitarist. Um, so, you know, but that was Suicide Solution, the second album with Jake, was where he really went commercial. You know, that kind of kind of went a little downhill at that point for me. Yeah. On to yeah, track it was five. Much more of a pop sound than yeah, a yeah. metal. Right. On to track five, Suicide Solution. Some trivia on this one. Um, Osborne said in 91 that the song was about the alcohol-related deaths, death of ACDC's Bon Scott in 1980, but Bob Daisley revealed in 2002 that he had, Os- that he had Osborne himself in mind when he wrote, wrote the lyrics. Wow. So Daisley wrote the lyrics about Ozzy, who was, had a notorious drinking problem. Uh, I have, because wasn't this the infamous song that they tried to blame? Yes, I'm getting uh, to that right next. <laughs> okay, okay. November 1st, 85, a lawsuit against Osborne and CBS was filed by the parents of John McCollum, a teenager who, who committed suicide allegedly after listening to this song. The Platons, however, failed to prove that Osborne had any responsibility for the teenager's death. The plaintiff's attorneys alleged that a line from the song stated, why try, get the gun, and shoot? Lyricist Daisley, again, yeah, well, yeah, he wrote the lyrics, Daisley, um, and Osborne himself both claimed that the line actually says, get the flaps out, 
flaps they insisted was an flaps they insisted was an english vulgar slang term for vagina don <laughs> don arden sabbath's former manager and the father of sharon osborne um is on record as having said that the song's controversial lyrics about about the song's controversial lyrics quote to be perfectly honest I would be doubtful as to whether Mr. Osborne knew the meaning of the lyrics, if there was any, because his command of English is minimal. <laughs> but, I mean, it's clear that the song is against suicide. Well, it's a, it's not a, it's it's about alcoholism, straight up. Right. Wine is fine, but whiskey is quicker. Suicide is slow with liquor. It's about destroying your life with alcoholism. And it is right, also exactly. against destroying your life. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take much to figure that out. Although, I, as a goof on my notes, I have in parentheses "do it," just do it several times, <laughs> just in my notes. And I listened to that spoken part in the middle very closely a few times. He does say, "Get the flaps out." <laughs> um, but this is the thing this song it's people think it's about suicide it's clearly against ruining your life with alcohol right um there's some sabbath stuff that people think is occult and pro-satanic it's clearly against the occult yeah you know right but it's just people need to think more (laughs) (laughs) right you know onto the song itself um Ozzy does sound a bit drunk on the vocal. <laughs> um, it, it's kind of odd in that sense. Um, love how loose the band sounds. Everybody does just kind of sound drunk on this one. It, it kind of takes a while for this one to to grow on you. I think, like mm-hmm. it would, on first listen, it was just kind of like, ah, is this really? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's off, kind of, you know? Yeah. But uh, as a straight up rock song, it. it works yeah love the timing change on the chorus and how it just stretches out on the break there's this long instrumental break there's no solo at least you know in the middle there's just this long instrumental break where the band just stretches out and ozzy just rants over a distorted mic (laughs) just this echo on and he's just yelling things like get the flaps out (laughs) No solo till the end. The end gets very nice and sparse, and Randy just gets some sound effects going. It's very nice ending. Um, on to track six, Mr. Crowley. Keyboardist Don Airy claims that the intro was written by him, as well as parts of Revelation Mother Earth, in the studio, though he never received writing credits for this co- these contributions. I believe him, because that intro is just something a keyboard player would riff on of course. And come up with on their own. And he probably just brought that to the studio fully for him, had, having written it years earlier, and said, let's just plug this in. <laughs> Love the intro. I mean, it kind of plays with the melody, though, so little, I, I don't know. I, yeah, maybe. Um, it, it's just perfectly cheesy horror organ music. I love the intro. Um, this one's always been one of my favorite Aussies, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. Um, uh, we had to, Back when I was running at Learning Center, we had a, a tutor by this name, and it was always fun doing the schedule. Nice. You know, you'd have like guy go, oh, "Who's going to tutor the three o'clock student on Friday?" And I would just answer, "Mr. Crowley." <laughs> nice, um, really good melody, and it's not something I call Ozzy out for a lot. I, I mean, he's got a good voice, but he's not a melodic singer, right? Um, Love the harmonies that Daisley chooses for his bass part. Now, there's a line in the second half of the first verse. I think it's where it is. Um, Mr. Charming, and after he says Mr. Crowley, he comes back to Mr. Charming and then Mr. Alarming. Yeah. When I was like 14, 13 hearing this song, Mr. Alarming in Ozzy's, you know, on a cheap tape deck, you know, that's been overplayed, you know, it's kind of sounded like my last name. <laughs> oh, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know the line, if you, you know, this was in the early eighties or mid eighties, you know, no internet to look up the lyrics. I had no idea what he's actually saying. Cause it's Ozzy. 
Um, and it just sounded like Mr. Maloney. <laughs> <laughs> weirded me out now i know mr alarming and and you know i love the lyric um particularly the line at the end was it polemically sent <laughs> you know i don't think i've ever noticed that one um, i mean i've always like won't you ride my white horse mm-hmm. it's symbolic of course right <laughs> a polemic is someone who likes to start shit yeah and and crowley was notorious for liking to start shit um Love how everything just kind of detunes right before the solo. There's just this mm, before the solo comes in. Um, and the second solo in stereo is great because you get Randy in both ears and each one is just a little bit different. And then the, at the end, I love how the rhythm just rhythm section just double times for a bit. Yeah. Um, on to track seven, No Bone Movies. Originally intended to be used as a B-side, but was added to the album to give um, the drummer of Kurzweil a writing credit, as all the other material had been written before he joined the band. Um, this is my pick my... for weakest. Yeah, I mean... It's I, a B-side. It's... I mean, I kind of like it, but I think compared to the rest of the album, I mm-hmm. think it's it's the weakest. Yeah, it's a B-side. It feels like a B-side. Nice yeah. groove. It's kind of fun. Um, bone movies are what Randy and his friends used to call porn. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, it's about porn addiction. <laughs> Got kind of a glam feel. Yeah, I mean, it's another one that you wonder, like, why doesn't this get any airplay kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Like, they only played two songs off this whole album. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Um, Crowley and, um, Crazy Chain, of course. Yeah. Um. It's interesting because I don't really, I don't listen to radio. It's been like ages since I've listened to radio and I know the album so well that I've, I'm not really in touch with what gets played on the radio. Um, but yeah, it, but I mean, throughout the decades, listening to classic mm-hmm. rock radio yeah, yeah. Or, or the, the metal, right. you know, the, uh, the rat or the other, you know, stations around Jersey mm-hmm. or any rock station, right. they would only play those two Aussie songs right. and that's it. <laughs> um, from but this, this album, yeah, yeah. play other Aussies. Right, from, right. Um, but this one's got a really nice groove. Um, love how the solo kind of fades in and out. It's still kind of catchy, you know. It's just again, it's a, it was, it should have been a B set. I understand, particularly knowing how points work in the record industry, wanting to give Kurz like a credit, <laughs> so yeah. it can have some points. Um, but it's just, it, it sounds like a B side. Um, do like the gang vocals at the end and the double time kicks and the ending drum fill is very nice. Um, on the track eight, Revelation, Mother Earth. This is my favorite. Um, just this beautiful classical I, intro, great keyboard sound, brilliant lyrics. It's about, uh, the environment. Could have sworn it was the beginning of Salisbury Hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of sounds a little bit like it, Joe. Yeah. Um. Maybe Ozzy's best vocal on the album. Um, love how the chorus, it just kind of starts to get louder. Great tubular bell use. Um, although the vocal is a little quiet on the chorus. There's a lot else going on. I put that too. The mix is a little weird. Like Ozzy's voice, you can barely make out uh, against the music. Yeah. It's just this wall that he's lost in. Ozzy's vocals are typically run through a lot of effects. Yeah. Um, except for on No Rest for the Wicked. When I was going through all of his albums. There's very little vo- processing on his voice on the album, which was surprising to hear. Everything else, it's that you know, processed Ozzy sound. And it can, when you have that many effects, it can be easy, it's easy to bury the sound, you know, with a lot of other things thrown on top. And this, you know, when you get to that chorus, there's so much stacked on top of that vocal that it does bury it a bit. Um, do like how um the call and response between i think it's a vocoder in in the, in the second verse it's a keyboard yeah. it's basically the keyboard equivalent of a talk box yeah what you say into the mic gets played through the keyboard um that was a nice call and response with the vocal um and the how a little bit how the instrumental break goes back to this nice quiet beginning um piano solo well, how proggy this gets yeah, yeah. Nice quiet beginning. There's a piano solo, which was an interesting choice. 
you know, you always expect a guitar solo on a Randy Rhodes album. Um, love how it picks up at the end, and then we get this nice frenetic solo that plays well against these urgent lyrics about the environment. Right. Now, I noticed on Spotify that this was the last one you listened to. No, I, uh... Okay, this was the most one you would listen to most recently. Maybe you went back to it. Um, so you did listen to track nine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, track nine, Steal Away the Night. Nice transition from Revelations. Um, it's got a good groove. Love all the bass fills. Another one that kind of feels very glam. Um, it's almost like the two of them are, you know, together. A little bit, like, yeah. Musically, at least. Uh-huh. They, they flow into each other. Like, like you can't... That's why I knew I listened to it, because you can't miss it. It goes straight into right, this. Right, right. Um, it's kind of lackluster, but it's fun. Um, weird choice to end the album. Yeah. Because it's just kind of a filler track, but it does relieve the tension nicely after Revelation. I think I've actually heard this one before uh, uh, outside of the other two. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's another one that could easily have gotten airplay, yeah. too. And, like, why not, you know? This is the one track on the original release, which is nine songs, that I did not remember at all. Oh, uh, yeah. It left no impression. <laughs> Yeah, it is um, another straight up. I mean, there's a few songs that are just straight up rock songs on yeah. this, but that's kind of you know that's his thing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you listen to track ten at all? No, no, I didn't get to track ten. I, I give it a listen. Um, nice groove, good bass sound, nice and gritty. Um, the bass is nice and center stage. Um, good to hear Ozzy at the top of his register. It really goes high on this one. But there's a bit during the solo. In in the chord changes and a little bit of the solo melody, that sounds a lot like "Caught Up in You" by Thirty Eight Special. Oh yeah, that was released you know a few years later. I think maybe they ripped off Ozzy a little bit. Wow, I'm not saying I don't know but, if they did, but there's a bit I during think the that's guitar surprising, solo, honestly, because I mean Thirty Eight Special isn't exactly a <laughs> <There's> <laughs> actually... trailblazing band, right? You know? It wouldn't be surprising if they took a little bit and borrowed it. Um, yeah. Having said that, I kind of like 38 Special. They're fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, that was just very surprised when I heard a little bit of a chord change and a little melody that was very reminiscent of Caught Up In You. Um, so, do you recommend it? I definitely would. It's a very solid album. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I absolutely do too. It's a classic of the era. Holds up really well. Um, I just can't listen to tra- Crazy Train for the <laughs> millionth time. <laughs> right. Like, there's, I mean, there, there are singles like Down Under and uh, the, the other one from mm-hmm. Missing Persons that we've seen, heard so yeah. many times. But yeah, this one. <laughs> and also, I think it's more so a case for you well, for two reasons because I loved this album back in the day. So I listened to it a lot. And so it's always going to have a, a place in my heart. And also, I'm not a sports person. <laughs> you're a sports person so you watch you hear it more than i do right yeah. it's just like oh yeah we're playing the same five songs that we play every week kind of thing you know well we play welcome to the jungle we play crazy chain <laughs> i'm trying to think of what else they play yeah um i hear it once in a great while when i'm forced to watch an ad online somewhere <laughs> you know i think it was the bennington show had like a joke too or like the producer was supposed to do like a promo for them and he used this and it was kind of like oh jesus really <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's really funny and it is a really great song you know it, it, it's right it is it is a great song but yeah it's just ridiculously overplayed again all right that's it for blizzard of oz until next time when we'll be reviewing love it first thing by scorpion sticking with the 80s metal um that album i re- revisited recently very nice surprise there's a lot more to it than i remembered and it's another one that i listened to ad nauseum back in the day so it'll be nice to review it until then of course always remember never forget wherever you go in life there you are there you are of course that brings I almost went to zombie take out there <laughs> and I'm not going to get that part <laughs> no impromptu plot summary no, here for, um, not for now um, um, uh, three in one night is more than enough yeah I think that's why I did it I, we just reviewed three movies on zombie take out two shorts and a feature and yeah I just kind of got stuck in a thing there um, 
I did say the hearing, right? I hope so. Yeah, this is the hearing if I didn't say <laughs> that. the hearing. Right. We um, listened to an album. <laughs> and now we're going to review it.